everyone welcome to the lecture again in the last lecture we look at the equilibrium of the rigid bodies in two dimension so in that case the forces that were acting on the body they were coplanar today we are going to look at the examples of the equilibrium of rigid bodies in three dimension so in the last lecture we also saw that suppose i have a rigid body and on this rigid body i have forces that are acting so let us first define the axis let's say this is x axis this one is y axis and uh, you have a z axis and let's say i apply a force f and i want to calculate the moment of this force about point o so first we draw a position vector r on the line of x and of x and the moment about o is r cross but let's say i want to calculate the moment of this force about a line okay so let's say this is the axis and about this axis i want to calculate the moment so in that case the moment about this line let's say this is some a a prime line then the moment about a a prime will be the moment about o and then you project and then you take the projection of this moment along the line a a prime so let's say the unit vector along a a prime is n cap then the moment about a a prime will be r cross f this is the moment about o and then take the projection along a a prime this concept is very useful when we calculate the moment in three dimension today what we are going to do is first we will look at one example wherein the forces will be coplanar two dimension and then we will look at these concepts okay wherein you know it is convenient to take the moment about a line so let us look at the first problem so the statement of this problem is following the weight w is attached to one end of a rope that passes over a pulley that is free to rotate about the pin at a the weight is held at rest by the force t applied to the other end of the rope compute the pin reactions at a so first let us make the free body diagram of this problem so we have this pulley and on this pulley we have weight w downwards and we have a force t which is acting at an angle of 30 degree from the vertical and uh, because of this force and the weight there is a reaction force at a let's say the force is ay and ax and we have to find out this force let me also put the axis over here so to calculate the values of ax and ay let us take the moment about a so if i take the moment about a then i have w into r so this is r r is the radius of this pulley equal to t into r so therefore we see that t is equal to w we get the value of t now let us balance the forces along the x and y direction so first let us balance the force along the x direction so summation fx has to be zero for the equilibrium therefore ax will be t 
sin 30 degree and T is W. So, therefore, this is W and sin 30 is 1 by 2. Similarly, let us have summation F y equal to 0. So, this will give me A y equal to W plus T cos 30 degree and this will be W 1 plus square root 3 by 2. So, therefore, you know we find out what is A x, what is A y and what is T. Now, let us look at the three dimensional problems now. So, uh, the problem statement is gain following. Question number 2. The uniform I beam has a mass of 60 kg per meter of its length and it is asked you to determine the tension in the two supporting cables and the reaction at D. So, first let us make the free body diagram of this problem. So, we have this I beam and uh, at a distance of 2 meter we have 2 cables and uh, in these cables because of the symmetry the tension will be the same. Okay. So, this will be let us say T A B and this is point C. So, in this direction it will be T A C, but because it is a symmetric problem. So, you can clearly see that T A B will be uh, equal to T A C and let us call it equal to T. Okay. Now, at uh, the center of the mass its weight is going to act. So, this is also 2 its weight is going to act. So, this is 60 kg multiplied by the length which is 8 and then g which is 9.81 equal to 4708.8 Newton. So, uh, the weight is going to act downward and then at point d which is at a distance of 1 meter from the another end uh, vertical force is going to act. So, let us call it d z. Now, this is the free body uh, diagram of that also let me put the axis over here. So, we have the x axis and the y axis and the z axis. Now, to calculate the tension etcetera uh, let us first see that summation f y equal to 0. So, summation f y let me just make this figure let us put more detail into the figure. So, let us call this angle as alpha. Uh, so, summation f y equal to 0 this is going to give you T a b equal to T a c equal to T this is what I am saying also from the symmetry you can see or you can use summation f y equal to 0 and you can see that T a b T a c equal to T. Now, let us calculate the moment about a. So, summation m a should be equal to 0. So, uh, for this we have at a distance of 2 we have 4708.8 Newton force and uh, the moment of T a b T a c will be 0 because that is passing through point a, point a. So, this should be equal to d z into 5 because this length will be 3. So, therefore, d z will be 1884 Newton. Now, to find out t let us use summation f z equal to 0. So, let us look at the component in the z direction. So, we have 2 t and uh, cos alpha this alpha we can find out from the geometry plus d z equal to the weight which is acting downward. So, we have 2 t into cos alpha will be 3 divided by square root of 
13 because this is 2, this is 2 and this length is 3. So, therefore, this length will be a square root 13. So, therefore, cos alpha will be 3 uh, divided by square root of 13 plus dz is 1884 equal to 4708.8. Therefore, t will be 2824.8 multiplied by square root 13 into 2 into 3 and this gives you 1697.5 Newton. So, this is how we can you know find out the moments in uh, in this problem uh, about uh, you know uh, z axis and so on and we can calculate uh, the value of t. Now, let us look at another uh, you know interesting problem in three dimension. So, here the problem statement is following the uniform 7 meter steel shaft has a mass of 200 kg and is supported by a ball and socket joint at A in the horizontal floor. The ball and uh, B they rest against the smooth wall as shown and it is asked you to compute the forces exerted by the wall and the floor on the ends of the shaft. Okay. So, clearly this is a three dimensional problem and uh, to solve it let us first make a free body diagram. So, uh, let me first draw the axis. So, we have x axis, y axis and z axis and uh, we have a shaft which is like this, its uh, center of gra gravity is going to act in the center and it will be w equal to mg. Now, various dimensions are given. So, for example, this is 3.5 meter, this is also 3.5 meter this length is 6 meter this is 2 meter and uh, let us say this is h so this point is a this point is b now at point a again various forces are going to act various reaction forces are going to act so uh, let's say we have the force in the z direction we have the force in the y direction and we have the force in the x direction okay because uh, at point a uh, it is not restricted it can move in any direction so therefore for the equilibrium the forces have to act in all the direction at point b similarly we have the force which is acting in the x direction and uh, we have the force acting in the y direction. Okay. So, these many forces are there to calculate the forces let us take the moment about A. So, 
So, in this case the contribution from A x, A y and A z will go away because they are passing through A and uh, the moment will be A b multiplied by B x plus B y plus A g let us call it z multiplied by w and this has to be 0 for the equilibrium. Now, to solve this equation I should know what is a b vector and what is a z vector. So, uh, let us first calculate what is a b vector. So, a b vector will be o b minus o a. So, wherein o is the origin and this will be h times k cap minus 2 i plus 6 j. Now, let us first find out how much is h. So, we can see from the geometry that 7 square equal to h square plus 6 square plus 2 square or h will be square root 49 minus 36 minus 4 or h will be 3 meter. So, therefore, a b will be minus 2 i minus 6 j plus 3 k and you can see that a g is nothing but a b by 2. So, therefore, this will be minus i minus 3 j plus 1.5 k. Now, let us put it in equation number 1. So, we have a b which is minus 2 i minus 6 j plus 3 k and cross product with b x i plus b y j plus minus i minus 3 j plus 1.5 k and uh, then the cross product with w equal to m g. So, this is 1962 k cap equal to 0 because this is nothing but 1962 Newton and this is very simple uh, cross product. So, let us first calculate it. So, we have i j k minus 2 minus 6 3 b x b y b z plus again i j k minus 1 minus 3 1.5 0 0 minus 1962 equal to 0. So, this is the equation that we have. Now, we can do very simple you know simplification of this and it will be i minus 3 b y minus j 3 b x plus k minus 2 b y plus 6 b x plus i into 3 into 1962 minus j 1962 plus k cap into 0 equal to 0. So, this is the equation that we have. Let us collect the coefficient of i j and k. So, we have i 3 b y plus 5886 plus j 3 b x minus 1962 plus k cap minus 2 b y plus 6 b x equal to 0. So, now because this equation is true, so therefore, the coefficient of i j and k must be 0. So, let us equate the coefficient of i j and k cap to 0. So, we get b x equal to 1962 divided by 3. This is 654 Newton and we have b y equal to 5886 divided by 3 and uh, this gives you b y equal to 1962 Newton. So, now, we got what is b x and what is b y. 
now we can use the force equation along the x, y and z direction. So, if I use summation f x equal to 0, I will get the value of a x. So, let us use summation f x equal to 0, this will give me a x. Let us see. So, here uh, a x should be equal to b x. So, therefore, this will be 6 54 Newton. Similarly, summation f y should be 0. This gives you a y equal to 1962 Newton and summation f z equal to 0 should give you a z equal to 1962 Newton. So, therefore, we are able to find out the reactions uh, which is exerted on this uh, road shaft uh, uh, by the wall and the floor. Now, let us look at more three dimensional problem so that uh, we get used to it and uh, uh, here the problem statement is following. The uniform 15 kg plate is welded to the vertical shaft. which is supported by bearing A and B, a 120 Newton meter couple is applied to the shaft, the cable from C to D prevents the plate and uh, shaft from turning. and uh, the weight of the assembly is carried entirely by bearing A and uh, in the question it is asked you to calculate the tension T in the cable. Okay. So, uh, first let us look at the free body diagram of this problem. So, uh, first let me put the axis. So, we have x axis, we have y axis and we have z axis. The plate is like this. And uh, at point D, this is held by a cable and on x axis, it meets at point C, O is the origin and uh, at point B, we have the shaft. So, two forces are going to act at point B, force in the y direction and force in the x direction and at point A, three forces are going to act A y, A x and A z. This force A z is going to act at A because the whole setup, because the weight of the whole setup is supported at point A. Okay? It is written in the question that uh, the weight of the assembly is carried entirely by bearing A. Okay. So, therefore, at point B, it cannot support the weight. So, therefore, no vertical force is going to act at point B. And also, there is a torque. So, this is 120 Newton meter and this length is 200 mm. This is 80 mm. 
this is 400 mm and uh, the weight of the plate is going to act downward and the length of uh, this plate is 600 so therefore at 300 uh, distance it is going to act and also in the cable there will be a tension T which will be away from the body. So, this is the free body diagram of this. Now, to calculate the tension let us take the moment about z axis ok. Why is that? Because if I take the moment about the z axis then A x A y, B x B y and A z all these forces will go away ok. So, I will calculate directly T ok. So, to calculate let me write it down to calculate the tension T let us take the moment about z axis and as I said the advantage is the forces that are acting at point A and point B will go away. So, to calculate the moment about the z axis let us take the moment about O and then do a dot product with k cap because I will calculate the moment about O and then I will take it projection along the z direction. So, therefore, I will take a dot product with k. Let us write it down. So, I have a couple of 120 k which is acting you know in the z direction and uh, then I will have uh, O c. So, this is my r multiplied by t plus a weight w is acting multiplied by 0.3 j and then for the z axis I will take the dot product with k cap and this has to be equal to 0. I have directly taken the moment of you know the forces that are acting at A and B equal to 0 because eventually when you take the dot product with k cap whatever is the moment that will go away. So, to find out equation number 1 the result from equation number 1 let us first see what is O c and what is T. So, O c you can clearly see O c will be point to i because this is given in the question statement this is point 2. So, therefore, it will be point to i and t will be t times the unit vector along d c. So, first let us see what is d c cap. d c cap is vector d c divided by its magnitude and d c is o c minus o d divided by d c mode and this will be point to i minus 0.6 j and its magnitude is 0.2 square plus 0.6 square. So, therefore, t vector will be t magnitude and then the unit vector in that direction. So, 0.2 i minus 0.6 j divided by 0.632. So, we have you know everything that is required. Now, let us put it in equation number 1 then we have 120 k cap minus 0.2 i multiplied by t 0.2 i minus 0.6 j divided by 0.632 plus minus w k cap into 0.3 j cap and everything has to be a dot product with k cap and this should be equal to 0. Now, let us simplify that this is 120 k minus 0 0.2 into 6 into 0 0.6 i cross j divided by 0 0.632 plus 0 0.3 w i and dot with k cap equal to 0 and this gives 120 minus 0 0.12 t 
over 0 0.632 equal to 0 and this, this gives you T equal to 632 Newton. So, just by using a single equation, note that we were able to find out T and the trick was to calculate the moment about the Z axis. Now, let us look at uh, one more problem in three dimension and uh, here the problem statement is following. The welded tabular frame is secured to the horizontal x y plane by a ball and socket joint A and receives support from the luge fitting ring at B. Under the action of 2 kilo Newton load, rotation about a line from A to B is prevented by cable C D. and uh, the frame is stable in the position shown. And it is given that neglect the weight of the frame compared with the applied load and determine the tension T in the cable. So, this is the problem statement. Now, uh, to solve this, first let us look at the free body diagram. Okay. So, for that, let us first fix the x, y, and z axis. So, it is already given that this is the z axis. We have y axis and x axis, and uh, in this, we have a uh, this frame this is parallel to the x axis so this is the frame that we have now at point b we have a weight and uh, this length is 3 meter, this is 2.5 meter. At this point, we have a force. So, this force is parallel to the y axis. So, this is the force F equal to 2 kilo Newton. And at point B, we have the reaction forces Bz and Bx that is going to act. Now, there will be no force along the y direction because this ring at B, it can move in the y direction. So, it is free to move. Therefore, there will not be any reaction along the y direction. Now, also at point A, we will have three reaction forces. So, let us say A, Z, 
then the force along the x direction and the reaction force along the y direction and also there is this cable so therefore there is a tension force away from the body so it will be along cd now in this problem we have to determine what is t okay so there are various unknown uh, over here but if i take the moment about ab then five unknown forces i can get rid of so for example ax ay az and bx and bz these forces will be gone if i take the moment about ab okay so only the unknown force t i can find out so what i'm saying is if we take the moment about ab then all unknown forces except t can be eliminated now to calculate the moment about ab what i can do is i can take the moment about a and then take its projection along the line ab okay so to calculate the moment about ab let us take the moment about a and then do the dot product so with ab cap so when i say dot product i mean you are taking the projection right take the projection of the moment along line ab so to find out the moment about ab first i should know what is the unit vector ab cap so first let us find out what is the unit vector ab cap so ab cap will be vector ab divided by its modulus and uh, ab i can find out from the geometry so this one is 6 meter this length is 4.5 meter and uh, this is 2.5 meter and that is 1 meter so let us first see what is ab so ab will be 0i plus 4.5j plus 6k so this is you know x y and z of the point b divided by its modulus so a square root 4.5 square plus 6 square so that will be 4.5j plus 6k and let us take 1.5 outside so this will be square root 3 square plus 4 square and this will be 1 by 5 3j plus 4k so therefore i know what is ab cap so this is the ab cap now let us calculate the moment about ab so for the equilibrium moment about ab should be zero so uh, we have let's say this is r1 and let's say this is r2 so we have uh, r1 cross t plus r2 cross the force this is known this is 2 kilo newton so this is kilo newton acting in the y direction so this will be 2j cap and we have to take the dot product with ab cap which is 1 by 5 3j 
plus 4k and this should be equal to 0. Now, let us see what is r1 and r2. So, r1 from the geometry you can see it is minus i plus 2.5j and r2 is nothing but 2.5i plus 6k. Now, let us put all this thing in equation number 1 and also we should know how much is t. So, first let us find out what is t. So, t is its magnitude dot product with the unit vector along t. So, this is C d cap. Let us see what is C d cap. C d cap is A d minus A c divided by its magnitude. So, A d is minus i plus 2.5 j minus A c is 6 k minus 3 i and divide by C d. So, this will be 2 i plus 2.5 j minus 6 k and its magnitude. So, 2 square plus 2.5 square plus 6 square. So, therefore, t will be t magnitude into 2 i plus 2.5 j minus 6 k and uh, it will be 46.2 square root. And now we have you know all the ingredients that is required to put in equation number 1. So, let us put in 1. So, I have minus i plus 2.5 j cross product with t over square root 46.2, 2 i plus 2.5 j minus 6 k plus 2.5 i plus 6 k cross 2j and then dot product with 1 by 5 3j plus 4k equal to 0 and this is a very simple equation which can be solved by taking the cross product and if you do that you will get t equal to 2.83 kilo newton you can take it as a homework and therefore your t vector will be 2.83 divided by square root of 46.2 2i plus 2.5j minus 6k. So, with this let me stop here and thank you once again.